The people of ancient Lanka have abided with a tradition of mural art, which has developed in the Anuradhapura period, through the medieval Polonnaruwa era, and then into the Kendian period. The evidence for the existence of such a heritage is spread throughout the country, at numerous places like Billava, Tantrimali. These expressive paintings were by cave dwellers in prehistoric times, and they communicated with vital symbols and gestures, that which they wanted to convey. They used pulverized brown rock, clay applied on their palms, animals' blood, and resinous stains from the bark of trees. The artists seem to have been highly intelligent, self-exploratory learners, and skilled practitioners. They were able to communicate profound concepts to the world of a philosophical plane alluding to birth, existence, and death with vivid imagination, using multiple colors, and brushes made with material derived from nature. The patron deity of arts and crafts, Vishwakarma, who also inspires sculptors and architects, is thought to have initiated a reference work artists can consult, named the Great Book of Art, the Shariputraya. The significant painters who follow such noble traditions created the frescoes, which are at the world-famous Sigiriya's site, and also the frescoes in the Dambulla temple, which are included as part of the Kenyan style. These artists commenced their work with due regard to ritual, and custom imbibed from their antecedents. The lineage of artists who hail from the generation of Devanagampola Silvattana, Devendra Mulachari and Nilagama Jeevan Naide carry on with their traditional knowledge and artistry even today on account of the dedicated efforts of Nilagama Jayasena who can claim to be the contemporary link in this lineage. The only evidence for the traditional knowledge on the size and measurements prescribed for Buddha statues and paintings are found at the historic Ridhiviharaya temple's upper rock wall. It is a plumb line chart to be used as the template for creating replicas of Buddha images. The artist inscribes his sketch with the fine brush made with the attuttari or nettle that grows in abundance. Then he finished it with the colors made with natural ingredients derived from vegetation and soils in the earth. The painter cuts a stem root from a pandanus plant and manually fashions a brush from it. He uses this quickly made brush to paint the background in colors. Black is concocted by boiling resin, the sticky sap of the jack tree and a cotton cloth in a pot of kakuna oil and then burning the piece of cotton cloth which has absorbed the fluid. The sooty smoke that emanates from it is collected into a pan and kept over a pot. That soot is then mixed with water and wood apple gum to produce a black tint. 
vermilion crystals are ground with water to a soft paste and mixed with wood apple gum to produce red. Yellow was produced by grinding Ratkiriel, a genus of Asian rice, with wood apple gum. A golden hue was achieved by mixing a pinch of red with it. Painters of old followed elaborate rituals to produce white. Accordingly, they would visit the banks of a reservoir, where they believed could be found makulumeti, a form of pipe clay. Then. They erect an altar to invoke blessings with the lighting of lamps and appealing for a supply of this pipe clay to be used in their temple project. They believed that following the ritual when digging the earth, they would be led providentially to a stratum of this white clay. Such white clay is then mixed with water and filtered. After that, the water is removed and the remainder is dried. The powder is then mixed with the resinous gum of the wood apple tree to produce white paint. Wood apple gum is not water soluble and therefore maintains the polymeric bond over time. The well preserved frescoes on the external surface of Sigiri rock, the frescoes at the Tivanka image house in Polonnaruwa, which are from the 12th century CE and also other temples in the period and in the Kendian era are all of paint and applications derived from natural earth and herbal substances. Frescoes are affected by the use of colour on the surface of a stone wall of a building, which has been freshly plastered with white clay and polished. The painters in Anuradhapura and Polonnaruwa eras used sand, clay, lime and plant fibre such as chaff or straw mixed with gum or oils mixed in the plaster which was applied on the stone wall as several layers are needed to create a firm surface on which the artists could paint. Researchers opine that both painting on dry and wet surfaces was done in the case of the Sigiriya frescoes. In the Kandian tradition, when painting on walls, only one layer of plaster was applied. That plaster was made with sand, clay and cotton as plant fibre, according to what has been ascertained. The paintings belonging in this indigenous culture encompass all these traditions, technologies and craftsmanship. 
even the striking expressionist works of art among the few remaining samples hint at the complexity of the paintings of the ancient Sinhala people, which were intended to provide pleasure in the creative endeavor, along with an impact upon the viewer's state of mind, and also gives evidence of a desire to communicate elevated thoughts and knowledge of an ethereal kind. <laughs>